Hello, hello. Mic check, hello. Somebody on the other end there just want to let me know how we sound. Can you hear Sector? Can you hear SETI? Say hello, Sector, SETI. Well, if we're coming in, good morning, hello, and welcome to the Momo Show, episode number eight. And I uh, want to get some confirmation that my audio is not borked, but we'll just go ahead and reiterate as needed. All right. Uh, sound check. Check, check. Hopefully you all can hear me. Welcome to, again, episode eight of the Momo Show. Um, awesome. Thank you, Sector. I appreciate that, my man. Um, coming in great. Thank you, Smalio, my adoring fan. We uh, have got a couple of action-packed items on the menu today. First, we're going to revisit the race condition bug. I'm using finger quotes here uh, for Lua, uh, Distant Fixes Lua Edition. Had quite the uh, adventure into Linux performance tuning, um, a.k.a. Fix My Lag Fest. If you've watched the past couple episodes of the stream, you might have experienced the uh, laggy laggington of, uh, of my recording. It was bad. It was re got real bad. Um, then I uh, just want to quickly revisit 6.10.0, the UMO update, featuring the awesome, awesome automatic installation guide. Uh, I've got some ideas for some new features for the configurator, which is one of the tools we use in the auto guide. Uh, we had a brainstorm idea of the Momo tools pack, and I'll get into that in a minute. If we have time, maybe we'll revisit the uh, bound balance re-equip rework that we were poking at last week. And then we had a couple of ideas for uh, improvements to the modding on OpenMW website itself, including um, some changes to how we count mods and then a kind of an idea for work in progress lists. So, okay, let's just jump into it. Um, first things first, the race condition bug that I thought I was facing last weekend, not a race condition bug at all. Actually, let me go ahead and just pull up that code and you'll see. Distant fixes, Lua edition, scripts, uh, player. So what happened actually was simply that we were trying to process data for a quest that had none. Boom, just a simple nil check. That's all that was needed. Um, and as I wrote here on the set list, there is a certain value in walking away from a hard problem. And if you watched the stream last weekend, there was a certain point where I was like, whoa, we gotta, we gotta shelve this. You know, it's getting a little too crazy in here. And, um, and indeed, it wasn't a race condition bug. And after I walked away from the problem for a few hours, looked at the code, I'm just like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. This is easy. <laughs> you know, so just something to keep in mind. If you're feeling beat down by a real hard problem, you know, just if you can put it away for a minute and come back to it later. So, um, yeah, consult the rubber ducky. Um, in my case, it's a, it's a, I've got like a, a Mario Piranha plant here, and I also got a VV plushie that actually I don't know where he went, but yeah, you know, something. Uh, all right, and so moving on. Adventures in Linux performance tuning. Um, wow, so the past couple of streams, I was having an issue where every now and then intermittently the, the stream would turn into a lag fest. Let me know if it happens. Uh, Gonzo, welcome, welcome, Gonzo. Say hello. Uh, and so what was happening is intermittently while I was streaming, the recording would turn into a lag fest, slideshow. It was bad. Um, and I just want to say I believe I have resolved it. Um, let's, just, uh, let's just do something here. I've got this nifty little ditty that I learned that can, um, in real time, watch my CPU clock speeds. And we see it, you know, it's bumping up there. I had previously, so my uh, CPU cores are technically able to go as high as 4.7 gigahertz on some of the cores. It's one of those fancy Intel CPUs that has some power safe cores. Those ones can go up to three point something, I think not quite to four point, but anyways, I was seeing them all cap off at like 2.5, 2.7, bit of a bummer. And that would explain partially some of the lag fest things I was seeing, but in a nutshell, this should actually be the first point here. Don't use more than one of these kinds of things. Uh, these kinds of things being hardware performance control tooling, right? And uh, as I wrote here, TLP is amazing. This is actually what I, in like, I don't know, the first month or so of having my framework laptop, um, 
I installed this thing and then just kind of forgot about it. Didn't tweak it or anything at all. But uh, the tagline here kind of appealed to me, right? Like I've got this. Uh, oh, see you, Gonzo. <laughs> I got this, uh, you know, laptop. I want to make sure the battery works as well as possible. And so this appealed to me. But I never actually tweaked it until a couple days ago following a discussion with Settiness about this and that thing you can try to to tweak your Linux performance. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just pull up the GUI right here. It's pretty slick, though. Um, all kinds of controls for all different kinds of hardware that you got on your machine. And yeah, we can set, you know, on AC, on battery levels, things like that. And so I've done that. I've told it, give me the most juice when I'm plugged into AC. And so it remains to be seen how that's going to pan out for the stream, but uh, definitely let me know if we're lagging. Uh, so, yeah. And, and yeah, just a final note about that. Don't mix more than one of those things because I had TLP, forgot about it. I use CPU Freak Utils, which is a, a, a classic tool for managing CPU governor settings. There's also CPU Power, recommended to me by Settiness. Same kind of a deal. It, rec it uh, tweaks uh, CPU governor settings, um, but don't mix and match, right? Because that was probably causing some issues for me, too. Welcome back, Gonzo. Um, yeah, moving on. We've got, uh, let's see here, we've got the UMO update still in progress. I'm very, very pleased to announce that thanks to our friends at the Microsoft uh, malware scanning team, Momo Configurator, no longer seen as malware, hopefully. They confirmed there's no risk or anything in there. So big thanks to the people at Microsoft for working with us on that. Um, that was one of the sticking issues we wanted to make sure was covered before we unleashed it to the masses. We don't want to tell people, hey, just go ahead and download this virus. It's no big deal. Trust me. Just to be clear, you should not trust random binaries or strangers from the internet. No way, no how. Bill has blessed us. Hey, Sophia, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Billy Windows, bless us. So yeah, big thanks to the folks at Microsoft for, for having this place where we could work with them on this and uh, working with us. So um, back to the auto install guide, though. We're still refining it, uh, tweaking the verbiage. Um, I think there's still room for improvement. Um, we'll go into that a little bit more. Um, I have some ideas for uh, um, how we can do that uh, with the tools pack. Um, but certainly, if you, the user, read the auto install guide, if something is confusing, if something is not explained well or explained, you know, in a kind of a janky way that sounded good to me, but maybe not to you, um, let us know. We're still refining it, and even after we ship it, we can we can change it and make it better. Um, the idea is, you know, it's the auto guide. It should be easy, straightforward, and streamlined. Um, and uh, so we'll talk about the tools pack in just a moment. I had some ideas for some Momo configurator features that I thought we could bang out on the stream pretty quickly. Um, first off, we have pretty good support for portable installs by allowing users to output OpenMW and setting CFG files to a specific location. But it occurred to me that we don't actually have this support for shaders yaml so i thought we could just implement that here live on the stream so without further ado let's just go ahead and open up the code and um actually something i implemented this morning actually last night but i committed it this morning um turns out the waza light fix is executable for linux out of the zip doesn't have the uh executable bit and so when users were running it it would say permission denied and i feel like that's kind of awkward for something that we're calling the automatic installation guide, right? If you have to do too many manual steps, it just feels a little awkward. So what we're doing here is on not Windows, if the file lacks the uh, executable bit, which is what this little line here is doing, uh, if you want to understand what this number means, I encourage you to look up UMask. Maybe uh, on, a, on a later stream we can dive do a deep dive into that, but. Nonetheless, this is this is uh, something in the Linux Unix world known as UMask. If the UMask doesn't uh, match what we expect, go ahead and chmod that, and then just move along. Um, and actually, here let's do a let's do a quick demo of that. So you can see here I've got uh, Waza Lite fixes executable. Let's just go ahead and make that not executable. So 644 for my non-Linux using friends means that it's no longer executable. My terminal highlights executable things in this yellow greeny kind of color not executable it's showing up white let's um let me actually comment this code out and we can see the error that people were getting whoops uh, boom there you go whoops 
permission denied. So what we do now is the latest, very latest build of the configurator will go ahead and just kind of do that for you. Boom, there we go, running Wazalite fixes. No problemo. So now we want now to add a flag. I put it somewhere. Where did I put it? Uh, here we go. So here's the code where we, uh, if your mod list is using the Momo shader post-processing pack, uh, there is a specific shader configuration that we want you to use to have the best curated known good setup um, to work with the mod list. Excuse me. And so what we do is we install that file for you. Um, but as I mentioned, we don't quite have a way to do that for uh, portable setups at the moment. So let's just add that. Ooh, whoops. And here we got the args file. You can see all the args are implemented here as such. And let's just go ahead and uh, let's see here. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a string. Emails, YAML. We will write the arg as it should be here. Um, let's give it some help text and a placeholder. And I'm saying output the shaders.yaml whoop, file to an arbitrary location. Gonna be that easy. Cool. Thank you. Go format. This thing right here, see how it's not lined up? Save it, lined up, go format. One of the things I like about uh, various modern languages and tooling is I don't have to think about how much indenting I'm using. The tools made the rules for me and I can move on with my life. Okay, back to the code. Here in the config.go file is where the business happens for configurating your mod list. And I think, uh, I didn't really think about this too much. So let's see here. I think what we're going to want to do is um, let's actually look at how this is implemented. Okay, so here's where we do the magic, and I take two arguments to this function, and I think uh, I'm just going to instead of calling it default CFGDR, I'm just going to call it CFGDR since it's no longer going to be limited to the default. Might as well have a sane variable name there. And we're going to call it uh, yeah, default CFG -der. So what we're going to do here is we'll say, um, have I already CFG -der. Okay, nope, we're not really defining that elsewhere. So we'll go ahead and we'll just put this right here. Copy shader jamal CFG -der string in go when you are initializing a variable with no value you'll typically do it like this but if i was initializing it with a value you'll do it like this uh no need for the extra var and an actual type declaration the compiler knows it's a string you can see down there in the lower left hand corner um but yeah right now we're not actually going to initialize it because we're going to say this if uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. A config shaders YAML out is not. Whoops. It's my Lua leaking through there. Uh, actually, let's do if it's is this. Mm, whoops. Forgot my curly brace. default. So if it's blank, if the user has not supplied this, then just use the default. Else. Otherwise, we'll just go ahead and uh, use that value. Mm -hmm. We'll say CFG dir. And it should just work. Let's see if Todd blesses us for this one. Let's give it a try. All right, so let's go run. We'll pick a mod list that actually uses this. Expanded vanilla, cool. And uh, shaders, YAML, out. 
Cyanide and fiberglass. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. And uh, yes, we'll see if we're blessed. Here we go. Todd bless us. Dot yaml. Todd bless us. Dot yaml. All right. Um, so what should happen here is blah blah blah. I'm gonna control C it once we. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 Interesting. Right. So we are not. I made a. I made a mistake. The YAML out is the name of the file we want. Todd did not not bless us. I not blessed us. Uh, so what we want to do here is actually say here. There's a few ways we could approach this. We can say, hmm. Feel free to pipe up sector SETI, but what I'm thinking is we can take the value here and say the CFG dir is like the whatever function it is to get the base folder of the file we gave and maybe pass that in um, so as to not change the business of what's happening here too much, right? Um, I'm going to go that route. That's right earlier. Go and get base folder of a file. file path all right absolute path uh dir here we go oh but the last element of a path cool okay let's try this okay Onger, hey, welcome back. Glad you're here. Just doing the hacking thing that we normally do, so uh, welcome back. All right, now, let's see. Todd, bless us, please. Error running Delta plugin? Okay, well, that's fine. I could ignore that for now. Uh, okay. So I think I think what we need to do here, let's rethink exactly how we're doing this. The argument should not be shaders YAML out. We'll call it out dir. Directory. Because the file has to be named uh, shaders.yaml. And you could argue, well, Come on, Johnny. Settings.cfg has to be named settings.cfg, but you allow me to set that to an arbitrary file. And that's a fair point. Um, and possibly something that needs addressing for these args. But for now, let's just go back here. And let's... Uh, dir. Come on, compiler. Shaders. Oh, I didn't change the... Let's go back here. I not save this file? Oh, geez. No, I just typed the wrong thing. Whoops. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Compiler happy. And so now I no longer need this file path call. And changes a bit how this is ran. Um, I still don't know if I like this inconsistency, but let's go ahead and... Ooh, you know what? Let's actually... Hey, Banny Rabbit, welcome. Thank you for joining, I'm glad you're here. What are we making today? We are currently uh, working on the Momo Configurator, which is one of the tools in the arsenal of our automatic installation guide. Have quite a few more things in the oven, but that's what we're doing right now, so welcome. Let's go ahead and absolute path here. That way I can give it some jank path that's not absolute and it'll fix it. Ooh, you know what? This thing re can return an error, so let's go ahead and error checking pattern that you may know and love or hate in Go. Uh, right. 
just to give people a clue about what happened if it blows up this shouldn't fail but uh you know maybe you do something like uh i don't know you give it like a fake directory um there was a problem while installing uh yeah, yeah. so it blows up actually before that okay there you go well at least it's working though look at that let's give it a period Delta plugin blew up, but do we have a shaders.yaml? We sure do. Let me just erase those. That way we know there's no trickery going on here. Oh, there is this one that I'm in right now. And uh, look at that. We got a shaders.yaml file. Not here, there, here, now. Cool. And uh, just so we know it's the right thing, let's go ahead and open it up. Yep, that's the one we want. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit torn about giving this a directory and not an explicit path, though. I'm like, we need some consistency here. So I'm being a little wishy-washy about this. I'm going back. Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, you know, because, like, these other ones let you give it an arbitrary. It's just going to require a deeper cut to um, the the function here. We want to install shaders.yaml, but that's no big deal. It's a tiny bit of code anyway, so let's just, uh, where's my main.go momo? All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say file path instead of cfgdir. And we're going to just comment that out for now, but it will be deleted. Or actually, let's do this. No, I like file path better. The method is called shaders.yaml. Good, okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Let's get the dir out of there. Good old language server yelling at me by way of squiggly red lines. Hmm. Okay. I, uh... I wonder, is this just... Oh, you know what? Huh. Default dir shaders.yaml. Okay. So let's just review what we got here. If you haven't specified another file to output, just going to go ahead and normal openmw config dir shaders.yaml. And we'll test that out to make sure it's good to go, actually. and uh, But if you do specify it, we're going to get the absolute path of, of what you tried to specify and hopefully don't blow up. And then we just pass that on actually here. Uh, this shaders YAML path. It's a longer variable name, but I optimize, usually optimize for readability in my code. Um, in something like the configurator, you don't have to worry too much about like squeezing every little drop of performance out. It's command line thing. You run it once and it's done it's not like a long running thing so it's okay to do this i think all right um so we give we give it the path which again we have changed the argument here okay actually got to delete some code there which is always fun okay let's run it now first let's do the normal non-specific way um sorry man, config whoops config open mw Oh, mama. Okay, I got quite a few. You can tell I've been running the uh, configurator a little bit here. When you run the configurator, excuse me, and you already have a settings CFG file or OpenMW or any file that it touches, it makes a backup. I don't want to destroy anything on you, you know. It just sounds rude to do that. <laughs> um, backup. Okay. And actually, let's go ahead and... Uh, Come on, shaders, YAML. Let's delete that out of there. Boom, it's gone. Let's just take a peek in there. Okay, no shaders, YAML. So let's just go run. 
Expanded vanilla. It says it installed them. Let's see. There you go. We got them in there. Hey, fall children. Welcome, my man. Thanks for hopping in. I'm so glad you're here. Our main man, the creator of Umo, in the house, man. Thank you, Sophia. Yes. And yeah, backing up files. I don't know. It just seems like I said, it's rude to like clobber something that you had there, you know. I don't know. Like maybe you maybe you tweaked the settings. Maybe you really like that um oh, what is it that we uh <laughs> maybe you really like the uh the um point glow intensity at the default, you know, and you you wanna, you know. Hey man, you do you. <laughs> yeah, maybe you like that, and that's fair. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's try the let's, uh, out shaders YAML out back to Todd bless us. Let's see it. Todd bless us. Here we go. Todd bless us. Excellent. That's a wrap. I'm mildly curious about why Delta plugin is failing though. Let's see. Looks like I got to update my local files here. Uh, yeah, by the way, can you hear Gonzo, Seti? Everybody say hi one, once more for, once more with feeling. Oh, no. Okay. Well, hang on. Say, say something. Uh, okay. What is the deal here? Hmm. In OBS, I'm seeing something register on the desktop audio thing, but maybe that's not coming through. Thankfully, I have... You can't hear him, but I've got SETI, the audio guru here. Let's do this. Okay, sure. Let's do this. Is this a pipe wire thing, by the way? Yeah, what's going on here? Said he is. You can't hear him quite yet, but he's walking me through this. Do I maybe want to use um? Hmm. Jack server is not running or could not be started. Okay. What if I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Is there another like graph that I could use? QPW graph. Woof. Okay. Uh Isn't there? Okay. Oh, man, what a bummer. Um, we're going to have to prepare better next week, and I'm deeply sorry. But I assure you, I've got them on the horn here with me. And if you were wondering who the hell I was talking to, well, that's what's going on. All right. Oh, that's, that's a bummer. Um, take one last stat at this here. Um, okay, how about this? Say something, either of you, on any of you. Something. How about now? Can you hear him? Yeah, I came through. Ooh, okay. Hey, all right. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well then, officially welcome to the stream audio, Gonzo, Sector, and Settiness. My main man here with me right now. Um, all right, let's continue on, huh? So what's going on here? If you happen to be... Um, an existing user of our automated automated workflow and you get something like this oh no failed to merge plugin what's going on what's happening here is the mods i downloaded with umo uh like two days ago or maybe longer um don't match the data that we have on our website because the configurator pulls down the load order information 
including data path and plug-in load order information. And that's like as up to date as it can get, but like if your files on your computer don't match what our data says, then well, you get something like this. So um, I'm not gonna update my mods right now, but uh, that's generally, generally what this kind of a thing means. And so what you would do, excuse me, what you would do is you'd say umo cache sync uh, beta uh, expanded vanilla and uh, we don't need use socket anymore. You would do something like this, right? You would do sync and then install. Um, eh, you know, why not just do a demo here? Let's just do it. Behold. Oh, uh, that's definitely on topic, Hunger, and that's a great question. Um, I actually have, I think, the same processor as you. It's a Zen 1, right? Um, I don't personally find that I'm CPU bound, but uh, OpenMW does definitely support multi-threading in a lot of ways. Um, there's multi-threaded nav mesh caching. There's multi-threading going on all over the place so if you have like a a decently threadable cpu um you'll benefit from that but obviously more muscle on a single core would help your cause here whoa couldn't connect a server hmm oh maybe it's trying to download from daniel's website and maybe that's offline at the moment let's see Uh, no. Physics is multi-threaded, right? Physics is multi-threaded, and you can actually set how many threads exactly. It's pretty easy, though, to foot gun yourself and just be like, oh, yeah, I've got 12 cores. I'm going to make physics 12 cores, too. You don't want to do that. Actually, the rule of thumb is start with two. Go from there. And carefully watch how it's affecting performance because, again, you'll start to see diminishing returns um, or even negative yields. You can like get worse performance if you thread out too much. Um, Hunger, I would encourage you to look at uh, the Read the Docs website and uh, look for various settings that have to do with threading and stuff um, and go from there. Uh, let me try to open up mine here. Well, you watch the glorious Umo downloading while I find the file. Boom, look at it go. <laughs> Magic. And we're done. All right. Games, open oh, MW. Checklist too. Yeah, such a good idea, Fall Children. That is a really nice touch. Settings. Okay, so let's go. Yeah, okay. So this is my settings for my uh, framework laptop, which is a Intel uh, 12th gen CPU. But you can see I've got async num threads 4. This thing can handle it. Um, let's see, threads is the only one I actually have configured, but I think you can set, um, let's see, settings, total overhaul. Yeah, there's a preload num threads setting that you can use to say how many threads to put on preloading. Gonzo and Abdu have been chatting about optimal preloading settings, and some of those are here. I cargo culted them, but it's a highly subjective configuration value that really depends on your hardware um i got this at num threads too it seems to be working well but i'm like eh, somewhat curious to try it out at four or even higher um target frame rate actually i should put it 30 it's what i usually cap my stuff at um but yeah there's options for you um little off topic but definitely relevant to what we do here so all right um what were we doing okay let's get my go no let's go so we got this, Todd bless us, going on here. Todd bless us, look at that. Whew. Halitosis. Interesting, okay. In very interesting, yeah, you know. Eventually we're gonna have, um, on the website we'll have different like quality levels. I know this is dear to Gonzo's heart and others, um, Sophia. But uh, it's kind of, it's a work in progress to A, put the functionality into the website, but also B, like 
come up with subjectively good values for different levels, you know, um, objectively good values, I should say. So let's just review our diff here. We changed the interface of that function to take the file path instead of the folder path. Hmm. Interesting. That's really good feedback. Yeah. I would, um, I would love to see more like good benchmarks of OpenMW. I feel like for that, we really need, we need some way to like set the random seed. By that, I mean, it's like when, when anything happens in the game, you know, whether the NPC walks this way or that way, there's some magic that happens under the hood that the engine bases that on. And I believe that's mostly affected by the random seed. If we could have a fixed random seed and maybe like a Lua mod that handles making the player walk in the exact same way every time, that would be a pretty good benchmark script. I would like to write that someday in my infinite free time. But if we had that and we could make reproducible, reliably reproducible benchmarks, it would be cool to see some results from that. Um, okay. So we added shaders ammo out. Boom. We uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's make sure the health text is correct here. Arbitrary location. Hey, that's a welpa, my brother, welcome. Thanks for hopping in, I'm glad you could make it. Hope you had a lovely dinner. All right, so I fixed that word. Todd bless us. Just review what we wrote here. Uh, we have a default happy path, or we have the I want it that away happy path. Um, consistent with the other ways we allow doing that. Looks good to me. All right. Let's ship it. These fat fingers. Okay. Um, before I push that up, though, actually, uh, ooh, okay. Cool. All right, that's a really good tip. Steve from Gamers Nexus. Okay. We should definitely do that. Um, yeah. By the way, have I lagged it all yet? We've been streaming almost 40 minutes. Not at all. No. Boom. Yeah, awesome. We did it, Seti. We did it. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, bro. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's really so smooth. Lag in the the stream itself, but I think that's just the normal Twitch delay. So. Yeah, it also might be my potato Comcast internet. Boo Comcast. Anybody from the thank you hungry? Yeah, anybody from the USA, maybe outside the USA, maybe knows Comcast and they knows that Comcast sucks. But uh, it's a duopoly out here. Nothing I can do. So, all right. Um, we already looked at that. So. T three hundred nine E. Xfinity, yes. Welcome, by the way. Glad you're here. And yeah, I'm sorry. Xfinity. <sighs> All right. So actually, Ronick, uh, also known here on the stream as Altario, had a great idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm a Linux user as uh, almost two decades now. And actually... I got interested in using OpenMW because at the time, the original executable just didn't work well on with Wine. Like, not at all even, I don't think, you know. And so OpenMW came around, and I'm like, oh, native re-implementation of my favorite game? Sign me up, please. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. Here we go. Um, anyway, though, so Ronick had a really great idea here. Basically, what we find is, is kind of common is folks that are using Windows – end up putting stuff into uh nice my linux family uh people using windows sometimes end up putting things into program files and you really don't need to do that none, none of our tooling including openmw itself none of that requires admin access i'm gonna write this here nothing need scream it from the the highest rooftops <laughs> preach nothing we use in our workflow including open mw requires administrator in fact i will even take it a little further and really like any gaming thing made in the past decade should not need administrator anything don't do it just don't do it 
okay? But what we're finding is <clears throat> people want to put stuff in a program file files. That's a protected directory on the operating system with good reason. And so then they're finding themselves like having to do administrator. And that's just, that's no good, right? Um, no good. No, no, no good. So uh, I'm coming a little dark here too. It's a cloudy day in Northern Illinois, by the way. Oh, well, uh, hopefully you can see me. Um, so... Ronick had the idea to like, I don't know, admit a warning or maybe even straight up just error out if you have something in um, program files. So I don't know. Let's take a look at what we got here. CFG setup. This is the code for the, uh, if you've ever ran the configurator, you might. I agree that we should probably try to omit program files, but there are a handful of other protected directories in the Windows environment that I think it would be worth including in that. And I know they're probably like edge casey, but I would point you back to that guy uh, we were dealing with who installed OpenMW inside of their documents directory, like adjacent to the config file. That was a really fun one. So, oh, oh yeah, what a good company. That's a good call out, Sector. Thank you. Yeah, certainly we don't have to limit it to program files. If there's known funky locations that like will lead you off the happy path in a you know quick manner then we should do that as well um yeah let's keep that in mind so if you've ever uh this is golang yeah um so the momo configurator tool let me just uh let me just pop up the url here the uh automatic install process that we have um depends on two pieces of tooling one would be Umo that we know and love, which will magically download things super magically. And the other is Momo Configurator, which I wrote with Golang. And the Configurator takes our load order information and configuration data from the website, curated, perfected, hopefully. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So I wrote it with Golang, though. Um, it's just a language I like to use. Um, particularly for me, what I like about it is that on my Linux box, I can compile a Linux executable, ARM, AMD64. I can compile ARM, AMD64, Mac. I can compile Windows. I only compile uh, AMD64, but I could do ARM. Looks like ERM is leading the charge, by the way, for a Windows ARM build. So, hey, if that becomes a thing, I'll make that as well. But, yeah, you know, easy uh, cross-compilation. I'm sure other languages do that now, too. Um, but, yeah, just I used Go for some work projects, and I like it a lot. Uh, so this would be the code, though, that handles the setup which prompts you for the things you need, right? We need Delta plugin. We need the INI importer, this, that, and the other thing. And I think this would be the place if we decide to yell at people for using program files, it would happen here. Um, in particular, I've got this, these two functions here, prompt and reprompt. I feel like it should happen here in prompt. And uh, just, just for giggles. And yeah okay all right yeah yeah we're we're all on discord hanging out so glad to have you here definitely um you know i'm probably gonna have to work with some of my windows using friends on this before we actually bang it out but let's just talk through what we might do i don't have a windows box handy right now but let's just talk through what we might do and i would expect this feature to drop before the configurator hits 1.0 but what we might do here is we might say file so the the what you give us, be it, you know, the folder for your mods or the path to Delta plugin, ends up in this variable that I have named file path. And if file path contains a nasty name like program files or, or the OpenMW default configuration folder, you probably shouldn't be using that. Um, emit a warning or an error, I think. And then what we would want to do at that point is reprompt and continue until they pick a path that's not going to make life miserable for them and everybody else. Um, uh, can, can we do this in a, maybe a, I don't know if this is possible, but can we just read the permissions of the folder that they choose and then tell them there is a problem with the permissions in that folder if there is, instead of like cherry picking specific folders Ooh, that's an excellent idea 
yes. The answer is yes, we absolutely can. Uh, if you remember a little bit ago, I looked at like the permissions of the Waza light fixes file. Totally can do that. It wouldn't cover, for example, putting something in the OpenMW config dir, right? Because the user would have permissions for that. But definitely that's a really good approach. Uh, look at file path. Do we have... Directory, it seems like something that it would be fair for special check out. And then um, we could just do like normal permissions work. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we would have two paths here. One for do we have, is this a place where the unprivileged user, hopefully you're not running the configurator as admin. Uh, I should probably have some code to check for that too, actually, right? Like, uh, just throw on an elevated session. Right, exactly. Like before we do anything. So actually let's go here to, um, jumping all over here, but this is like the main entry point to the program function I call process args. And really what we should do is like right here. If we're running as a privileged user, bail out. Whether on Linux, whether you're on any OS, you shouldn't run any of this stuff as, yeah, yeah, totally, fall children, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, it's uh, totally T309E. It's like something we wanted to do for a long time. I kind of thought it was like a 2090 dream. And then somebody, you know, we know and love, Fall Children, came out of the blue and made it a reality. And, and I was inspired by Umo to write the configurator then. Um, but yeah, whether you're on Linux, Mac, anything, um, you don't need to be running any of this stuff. Don't use sudo. Don't run it as administrator. Don't do any of that. And so I think it's definitely fair if we're running as a privileged user to bail out. Let's just see if I can really quickly do that. Uh, go lang, check if program ran as a... There's also a way to get Steam to redeploy very quickly without getting rid of your games at a new location on Windows. Um, I follow, like, uh, Viva New Vegas has a little blurb for how to do that to sort of, like, reverse that if... Uh, the user wants to do that so maybe we could do that too yeah that's a great idea we should link to that or take whatever blurb they have and, and adapt it for our setup <clears throat> help people to help themselves you know if you've got your games installed in program files eh, you know maybe just move them or even just morrowind out of there um let's see here mm. user current uh that's not going to work in a cross-platform way to be fair, though, I mean, at least as far as the, the Morrowind and install itself goes, we don't have the same kind of requirements that an MWSE install would for moving it out of there. We just want to make sure your your mod setup and shit isn't in there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Sector. And uh, yeah, further to what Sophia just said, by the way, T309E, I'm not sure if you were totally aware. Forgive me if you are, but just want to mention... In an update that we've got in the oven right now even we have this new shiny automatic install guide um and everything almost everything is done automatically for you and there's some things that are not that i plan to uh work on during this stream or maybe next week yeah ooh la la indeed so if you weren't aware head on over to beta.moddingopenmw.com click this shiny automatic install button and give it a read you will be introduced to Umo to download your mods, configurator to set your CFG up, and more. Um, yeah, let us know any feedback. And uh, what happens here, you just pick your mod list, click submit, boom, and then we ask you to please, please, pretty please, review the mod list FAQ. One thing, yeah, <laughs> 2090 today, woo, one thing, though. When you basically click a button to get 500 mods, there's going to be a whole lot of changes that you don't know about and might catch you off guard. Why am I leveling so slowly? Why am I not leveling up at all? Where the heck is that cube? Uh, guess what? We wrote this mod list FAQ, which we link to right here at the top, but it's also linked to on the bottom of every page here, mod list FAQ. And based on our experience over the years, we have listed common questions that people are going to have. 
when they just have 500 mods dropped in their lap and they want to know well, why is this that way why is that this way and we have hopefully covered a lot of the things that you may ask here but that's why we put it front and center at the top here because i really want to make sure people give that a read before they come into discord and are like why am i not leveling up and whatever um and then after you've selected your mod list and after you've read the faq pretty please go through each, each section down here and we walk you through and kind of jumping ahead just a little bit i i glossed over this in the intro but uh gonzo actually and i've thought of like how we could make this easier for people i didn't have the brilliant idea though that, that came from gonzo but sort of like how we have the momo post-processing pack where we gather good post-processing shaders into one zip file and make it easy for people you know four things five things in one what if we did like a momo tools pack where you have one zip that has everything you need ts3 command delta plugin ground coverify umo configurator light fixes all of it because that's the one thing that's sort of awkward i would say about our automatic automatic guide at this point you have to like go here and get OpenMW, then you have to go there and get Umo, and then go here and blah, blah, blah. And it's like something that people could, you know, they could fudge that a little easy, easily. So um, maybe we'll get to that if we have time on the stream today. Um, have like a, a tools pack where we bundle it all together for you, and you just pick the bundle for your operating system and get on with your life. Um, and then we would adjust the guide here accordingly because right now we've got – you know, download TS3 command, download ground cover if I download Delta plugin, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff you got to do not automatically in an automatic guide. And it feels a little awkward. We can do better, I think. Um, food for thought. We'll get there. Back to here, though. Um, so it seems like I was reading this uh, Stack Overflow post here. Yeah, okay. So this is going to take some thought to do it in a way that is cross-platform, meaning something that's going to work for Mac, something that's going to work for Windows, and something that's going to also work for Linux. Um, going to need to tap into uh, some of my Windows using friends there. I really just got to set up a Windows VM on my machine, too, so I don't have to bug Gonzo all the time. All right. I got a script for you. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Are you talking about OMW? Oh, I mean for a Windows VM. Oh, okay. Right on. I will definitely hit you up about that cool but this is something i absolutely definitely want to do um just don't run this stuff as administrator but we're not going to fully implement it today um let's go back to the set list here this is an idea i had uh quick mu cool yeah actually i think you mentioned that before of all children i'm not really familiar with it so i'll have to check that out quick mu cool um this is an idea actually that at the i had while we were having our weekly meeting for something. Uh, and uh, that is, we could write the Momo site version into the OpenMW CFG file. That way, it would be some clue for you, the user. Like, let's say you install the mod list today. And then six months from now, you want to install it again. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. What version did I have? You know, and, and it, would, it would make it easier for you to say, okay, I have version 6.9. Um... Let's go to the change log here and let's see total overhaul. Ooh, look, we got a 6.10. Hopefully six months from now, we'll actually have 7.0 out hype. But let's just pretend, you know, 6.10 is the latest release. And you'd be able to, you'd know, your config would say, you know, this was generated for Momo version 6.9, um, .0, and, and these are the changes you got to worry about, you know. And so I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to want. And actually... Maybe most of you don't know, not even the Momo peeps, but uh, let's see here. Uh, is utility. Well, so I got this. Um, I forget where, what function it lives in, but we have this endpoint called stat. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and curl minus s. Let's bigify my terminal. Uh, and the endpoint is just underscore stat. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Off 
awkward. Let's try this. Bad gate. Are we doing a deploy right now, by chance? Oh, probably. I've been I've been doing this game. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, Jay, let's JQ that. That's something I wanted to mention too, and forgot to. We'll get to that in just a second. So you can hit up this stat endpoint, and boom, we got there. Six point nine point zero. Let's uh. Oh yeah, I shut that down. Let's uh. Sorry, stop. No, no, you're good. You're good. That's why I have like three versions of the website running on the server. One's down. Hit up the other one. Okay. Uh, so if we have a, ooh, it's totally broken. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but we can. We already have this endpoint to work with to get the version number out. Um, and and write something into the configuration file. So let's find the code for that here. App info JSON. Where does it actually come from? Utils, okay. Ah, uh, yes, okay. If it's a tag release, it gets the git tag. If it's a SHA, it gets the app SHA. Git. Uh, uh, uh. Git SHA dev. Hmm, okay, well, let's just uh, see why this doesn't work. Excuse me. And you know, I think it's that time um, where we got to lower my desk. Excuse me for a moment. I got old man back problems. just there we go ha! and we're back all right um before i jump too much into the weeds of this though yeah so one of the things we're planning some of y'all might know about this we've talked about it we are planning a kind of rolling release pattern for the website what do i mean by that right now and since the beginning of the website we've had this workflow where you know, we open a, I already have it open over here. We have, we open a merge request, we queue up changes, we test them and so forth. And the, un, and that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. The unfortunate thing about this though, is that it takes time. And actually we've been, you know, we're waiting on a few third parties, including Microsoft helping us out saying the configurator is not a virus. Um, we're waiting on things to get the release out. But uh, what we want to do is We want to have a pattern where we update the main website more frequently. Not actually a rolling release, because a rolling release typically doesn't have versions, right? Arch Linux doesn't have, you know, release versions. I'm a void Linux user. They don't have release versions. It's just void or just Arch. <clears throat> Excuse me, really. Um, but we would be somewhere in the middle of that where rather than having like a, a you know, a cadence like we have now we would just have smaller changes come and go we would still have the change log with a with a version indicated i believe we discussed having so we have a major minor and a patch version here i think we discussed kind of going back to just major and minor um so we would still have that which is a little uncommon for rolling releases but what makes all this possible really is that we have in our GitLab pipelines, we now, thanks to a GitLab runner that we are self-hosting, we have in the pipelines, the code will deploy itself. After our test suite runs, make sure that we hopefully didn't break anything. We got this deploy beta job that comes up. And uh, you can see here, our Gonzo made some change and uh, boom, it's just happening. This is, uh, if you've ever used Ansible, it's a configuration management tool. That's what we're using to put all that out there. That code is open source, by the way, on GitLab uh, in the Momo deploy repo. Please check it out. But yeah, this just happens automatically now. And so thanks to the ability to do this, um, 
we can have kind of more of a rolling release pattern where the main website gets update more quickly. We don't have to tell people, ah, oh, check, that's fixed. Check the beta site, you know. That's what we want to get to soon, hopefully. Maybe after 6.10 even, you know, maybe 6.11 or 7.0, Hype City will be rolling release. I can't say, but we're working on it. We're definitely thinking about it. Okay, back on target, though. So we already have this, as I mentioned, stat endpoint. Okay, it's working locally. Works on my machine. But this is like, this is honestly no good. I'm not going to write this into a config file. What might be better is if we do the um, git tag or rev. What do I do for my mods? I can't remember the command off the top of my head. I do this for my mods. Find the brim w, go home, build. No, package. There we go. Git describe tags. Git is not a complicated software at all. And I think something like this would be better. So we have the last tag. Whoops. We have the last tag, 690. We have how many commits since the last tag. And then we have the short SHA one of the commit that we're on now. I think this is a lot better than, uh, well, this. <laughs> this is a little, like, nonsensical. If I was a user and I happened to use the beta website for whatever reason and I had this in my config file, you would basically have to know what the heck that even is and then to go check in GitLab. At least this would be something more that they could pass on to us and we could say, oh, yeah, you were you were using a beta. Okay, no problemo. So let's go back into here and hopefully we can change that. Yeah, see, I'm already doing that. Um, really, I think this should just go away. No get sha. It should just be get tagged. And I'm coming back here to utility. No. Going back here. Let's just not export AppSha anymore. It's not useful. Um, Fall Children, I believe you had an idea of putting the version in the header too. That's a really good idea as well. Um, could save on making an, an HTTP call, actually. Um, we can visit that idea, too. Cause, Is it, mm. Would a timestamp be prudent? Hmm. So the configurator does do that, actually. Let's check it out. Names, OpenMW, CFG, total overhaul. So, uh, whoops, OpenMW. If you've used the configurator recently, at the top of your file, you're going to have something like this. And it tells you what version of the configurator you generated it with. We don't have a 1.0 yet. And it tells you the local time. Um, so we got that covered for sure. Um, did you have another idea about that though, SETI? I guess um, I'm thinking more like rather than using the local time, uh, you know, something that's more bound to the version, I suppose. I, I don't know. I was just kind of like... You, m you mentioned like Void and Arch, and I know Arch, like when they release an ISO, they just give you like a date range of what it is, and that gives you a an idea of what quote-unquote version it would be, even though there's no versions. Yeah, actually, so my app images that I build have a timestamp built into the name, and this timestamp is actually, it actually comes from the git commit log. It's the time that this commit here was made. Um, so maybe we could do something like that, have like this kind of a string as well yeah maybe maybe it's just a uh, slightly more user friendly or you know like if you see 2024 10 24 like oh that must be a date i don't know it's yeah kind of my line of thinking that's that's a good idea that's a good idea we will i will definitely visit that let's get the shot out of here though We don't need any of this. We'll just count it out for now. We're gonna get JSON dump s. So I mean, you know, for reporting like um, OpenMW dev issues and whatnot, you're supposed to use like you know the short sum or whatever to tell them what you're using. So I guess it's not like completely out of a user's wheelhouse to you know know what that is or you know. Yeah. 
That is true. If you're interacting with a, you know, an open source project on a code forge, it's good to know, you know, how to tell them what version you're using in some way. Um, I think it's on us a little bit to give them an easy way to know that. Let's see if I changed this at least. Ah, good. Here we go. Nice. Um, good. So I'm not really sure why the deployed version of the site, though, didn't have that. Uh, let's see here. Let's uncurl. So just for funsies, we're going to HTTP 127.0.0.1, 8,000. Yeah, OK. Curl. Yeah, I'm not sure why we ended up. So the dash dev, the intention of that is <clears throat> it's an artifact from when I was deploying things from my laptop. So <laughs> basically last week and, and prior to that. Um, dash dev meant that I deployed something with uncommitted changes. I don't think it's super important to convey that anymore because we aren't really going to have that going on, uh, you know. Let's see here. Do I have that in the mix anymore? I think I deleted that, honestly. So, yeah. It should go away, though, is what I'm getting at here. We don't need to indicate. Yeah, okay. This is a little bit of code that I was doing. It's not maybe they've changed it but it was not there's not a direct way with git to say like oh do i have uncommitted changes because there's a few different ways that could exist but what i settled on was with git diff index quiet head um to indicate if there were local changes but yeah that's gone we don't need to do that anymore um let's go ahead and just uh let's do a quick deploy here staging local no reset I don't, by the way, know what we're going to do with the staging version of the website anymore. It's going to be a lot less useful now that we have automatic CI-based deploys, you know. But um, there's also a testing.moddingopenmw.com uh, that is off at the moment, has been for a while, but yeah. Um, and I know Fall Children and I were kind of talking about zero downtime deploys too, um, which should be doable for sure. Okay, so let's just try and hit this up again. All right, so something is happening to make that not work. Nothing is coming out here. Mm. And I, th I think, taking a step back, I think the deploy, we should pass in a variable. Uh, there's a few ways to do this, right? Um, let's think about this. One thing that we could do that might be a little nasty is when the deploy runs, let me just open this up, make file, no, that's not it. So when we run the deploy, this is the command that we run. We call Ansible playbook. We, we call a file that is the playbook to run, and then we give it a bunch of extra variables with the extra vars argument. And uh, in CI, actually, let's open that up now, whoops. CI. In CI, we are actually passing in some variables that come in from the CI environment. Anything that starts with a capital CI underscore <clears throat> is put into the environment by GitLab CI. And so we're telling it where the source code lives. Um, we're passing in some variables that I set for things like that. We're telling it who the commit author is. And maybe we could also take some variable and use like the Ansible template module to, I think I was doing this way back in the day actually, now that I'm talking it through. We can, we have this git.py file, right? Uh, where is it? Git.py. And maybe we could just like overwrite this completely with Ansible and do something like, you know, git tag equals replace me and have Ansible kind of just put the the output of git describe dash dash tags in there um that might be kind of cool um because i what i don't want what i don't want is like when you load the page to shell out to running git that's kind of stupid i don't know it's inefficient for sure 
when at, it's something that we know when we deploy the website. This is information that we know or could know because we're deploying it from the Git repo, you know? So it seems like a better approach, yeah, would be to do this um, and just completely overwrite this file. Let's see if we can do that. Deploy roles, Django app, Oop. tasks. Uh, let's just open up the main file here. I've been working in here. So if you've never looked at Ansible, or if you're not familiar, Ansible is basically programming with YAML. And if that makes your skin crawl, I respect that. <laughs> um, but it's extremely powerful and extremely useful. And just looking at, we've got a couple, we have the deploy broken up into a couple different files here. Code is where we sync the code or put it, otherwise put it on the server. Pip is where we install stuff for Python. This is where we're configuring. We don't actually run Python on the website. We run something called UWSGI, which is a web server gateway, if you will, for Python. And then we got database tasks compartmentalized into their own files. And I feel like this change we're talking about could go into the code file. Let's open that up now. And so there's two different ways we deploy the code. We mostly just use uh, something called rsync. If you're not familiar, it's a amazing tool for copying files. Um, there's also a pattern to git clone from the website. I think I might actually just delete this because it's really not that useful, but for now I'm just going to leave it. Um, but what I'm thinking is here, after we have rsync the code, we could also write out the git file, right? So like something like this maybe. Um, and actually, this is where looking at some of our other code will be useful here in UWSGI. So we actually use an Ansible built-in module called copy to write out the configuration file for UWSGI. And we can use the same kind of a thing to write our Python file. So let's just uh, humor me here. Git info, right? Git info. And if you're wondering why I'm putting all my strings into quotes when it's not strictly required in YAML, because... Because, 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 because you might, it's, YAML um, tries to be smart and interpret some things as what you might not want. So let's say like we have country code and we're trying to represent Norway. So we'll say no. Well, it turns out YAML in its infinite wisdom actually interprets no as false. So what you would have to do is do this and maybe you, but maybe you didn't know that. Um, and so just to avoid awkwardness like that, that's not the only time YAML can get weird on you. Um, just to avoid that kind of awkwardness, I quote basically every string. I hope you love spaces. <laughs> Why is that, Gonzo? In YAML. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's take the copy module and let's give it content. Whoops. And I think really all we need to do um, let's go ahead and set a default here. App version. And then coming back to our Set. We're going to send another extra bars, and we're going to say get out of describe tags. Let's just try that. Um, oh, wait, we want to. And if you were wondering why, going back to why the what, if you're wondering why I have true quoted here, true is a Boolean. Surely you don't need to quote it. Well, <laughs> when you pass in a Boolean like this with extra bars, unless you're using a JSON format, which I'm obviously not, it's a string. Took me like a half hour to figure that out last night when I'm like, why is it not working? <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, Django app version. Um, I'm going to add it. I don't 
remember what Nover is for. I'm trying to like put my. S oh, 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 oh. Okay. Momo version would be like the beta uh, super text, All right? So let's just go ahead and stuff this in here because the staging website doesn't have that. It's supposed to look pretty close to the real one. Um, okay. I'm not sure if this is the right syntax for the make file. I don't know if I need two dollar signs or one there, but we'll see if it does or does not work. Back to here, code.yaml. Code.yaml just sounds wrong. And then we'll say uh, generator of that version. So one neat thing about Ansible is uh, chat pause due to scroll. Wow, I'm missing chats here. Wow. Sorry if I've been missing some chats from you people. Um, one neat thing about Ansible is it uses the Jinja 2 templating style. And so we can say, we can just dynamically say things here, um, which is what we're doing. Let's go back to UWSDI. And so we want... Um, gonna go into source but let's let's actually let's connect to the server again source main alright cool and we're gonna say uh and dust so you can see potentially why Ansible is so neat right it's pretty powerful we can write files we can use variables we, we can strictly control every aspect of whatever it is we want um, and from a, a systems administrator standpoint if you've got a server out there running something that's important you don't want like some knobs that you manually tweaked out there right like something that you'll have to scratch your head and think about if it ever goes, you know, catches fire and becomes unavailable and you've got to recreate it in a pinch, it's better to run one command and poof, it's back versus like, oh, what did I do? Oh, no. Um, so that's why this is pretty neat. And so let's just go ahead and copy pasta this. Uh, And so yeah, we're just gonna have us. We're gonna overwrite the file that gets deployed. We're gonna write the git info in there, and it's just gonna be a string import, way more performant than shelling out to git, you know, which has got to like do a bunch of file reading itself. Um, you know, we want to have a quick website that runs well and doesn't require a supercomputer to run. Also, so let's, I don't know, let's see if it blends, shall we? Make a staging a local. Here we go. Um, Commit SHA is that. Commit author. I'm not seeing my oh, Django app version. Okay, okay. Yeah, you can see it right here. It's nothing. So my thing is wrong. Um, oh, you know what? I believe that's what I need to do. Let's try it again. Still didn't blend. Let's consult a search engine. Make command, make file variable, okay. Momo version Momo rev and the by the way this form here question mark equals 
in makefile parlance means that I could, if I wanted to, overwrite it. Um, probably not strictly necessary. I'm actually going to make it like that instead. And let's just do this. Ooh. Interesting. So, so I just had a thought. This is going to be the tag version. The reason why it's not working is because it's giving me the version of the um, Momo deploy repo, which has no tag, I don't think. Um, oh, and also I typoed. Look at that. Wow. Holy moly. Well, let's just see if this works now that I didn't spell it wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still blank. Okay. It's not change me, though. So we are setting it to something. <laughs> Just uh, not what we want. Describe. Oh, yeah, I forgot to fix it up here. Ugh, man. That looks okay. It's still nothing, though. Hmm. Interesting. Should let's go back here to my shell. Okay. Hmm. Right. Let's try. There we go. Boom. And so you can see right here, we got Django at version 6.9.0-286- blah, blah, blah. Looks right. Let's put it up there. Drink them if you got them. Got a iced tea with lemonade here myself. I recently got a soda stream. Highly recommend. Ooh, soda stream. Okay, I'm interested in this. It's, it doesn't require any power, just CO two. It's really nice. Wow, cool. Okay, huh? Very interested. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> what did we do? <laughs> I broke the website clearly. Let's see here. Right, get info. So it happened. Let's open the web browser and manually inspect here. What did I do? Oh, man. Um, changing. Whew, yeah, okay. Let's, uh. Oh, okay, yeah. Smallio is familiar with this device. Okay, we're going to have to get one, I think. <laughs> Yeah, you can put whatever flavors you want in there. Uh, oh no sugar gosh. or anything if you don't want, or sugar if you want it. Nice. That's pretty sweet. So I broke the website in some way. Uh, you know what? Let's, um, first off. Okay. Let's, um. Okay, okay. Yeah. I don't think we need this anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. So what happened is I'm writing out this. Um, oh, yeah, we got good root beer is key. We got Sprecher out here in uh, near Chicago. App info HTML. We don't need this anymore. They sell those at the Ace uh, by us. And my girlfriend always gets it because she's from Wisconsin, but also lived around Chicago as well. OK, right on. Oh, it's so good. Honey root beer. Mm. You never had it. It's very good. Don't drink too much soda, though, kids. It's bad for your teeth. 
uh, we so anyways I was writing this git file with just git tag and it was importing something else here and hence it not working so let's make it blend again and not break it this time how about sheesh oh yeah yeah are you talking about San Pellegrino Sophia blood orange San Pellegrino is my jam yeah they have those at Whole Foods they're so good Mm -hmm. I haven't had that in a minute. All right. Will it blend? Let's see. Or did I break the website again? Oh, <laughs> okay. Yikes. Let's see here. Should be getting something in the Django log, honestly, here. Etsy password. Nice try, hackers. <laughs> All right, how about this? So, stop. so if you aren't familiar with the shenanigans of hackers, what they're trying to do here is like Etsy password is a sensitive operating system file. And they're trying to like, they're hoping that I had bad coding practices and exposed the whole operating system. I don't even know what actuator env is, but yeah, this is more admin env gateway. This is basically bots and wannabe script kitty hackers trying to hack the website. Good luck. Okay, so we're properly off here. Let's go ahead and uh I think we got a hacker here. A wannabe hacker, that's for sure. I began my career in uh, systems and software working at web hosts, and uh, I've seen many of the tricks in the book of enterprising hackers. Yeah, Fargoth getting revenge. <laughs> Fargoth starts trying to below. fight his ring. <laughs> Hopefully this works. Cool. So if I hit the website up and it's broken, let's see here. Boom. Okay. Nice. This is what I wanted. Oh, <laughs> silly me. See what's going on here, folks? It's called Johnny doesn't know how to Python. He's been doing Go too much. But in this soup of backtrace output, what we got here is this is not a Python string, my friends. What a noobish mistake. Okay, let's just go ahead and rectify that. Content git tag. We'll go ahead and... Hackers take notice. All right. And by the way, I say good luck not because I'm cocky or overconfident, but because... The application simply doesn't have any secret information to give. It doesn't expose any secret. It just doesn't do any of those things. But hey, you do you. Better you waste your time on a target that is worthless than somebody who actually is vulnerable. <clears throat> yeah, if you're using passphrase anyways, like I don't think any of that would even matter if they could get your password file, right? Yeah, I, li I don't honestly... Cause the passwords are hashed in that too, so I don't know. Maybe there's like some way to reverse engineer that, but uh, I don't have passwords on any of my users. I am using passphrase, so yeah. They'd have to get your keys too. They would have to get my private key and uh, don't hack me, bro. All right, let's do this now. What's broken now? Wait a minute. What did I do? 500 error. But why though? Let's just, um, let's try something here. Back to the drawing board. Hmm? Just comment all this out. Oh, <laughs> well, no, this won't matter actually for the website, but let's just, let's simulate what we're doing there. 
my German friends. I know you're out there. All right. Girl. Working. Okay. Problem? I don't know. <clears throat> it's a little mysterious that it gave me a 500 error with nothing else there, um, to be honest with you. Oh, hey, it's working. You can't explain that. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad you noticed that, Sophie. Some of the verbiage that UWSGI uses, um, it's brutal. Gets the job done. Hey, Cephid Soron. Thank you for joining. I'm glad you're here. What mod list do I usually play with? Um, yeah, please, everybody chime in with what you use first before I go. Come on, settiness. Yeah, total overhaul. Total overhaul. Boom. Um, myself? Yeah. You know, myself, uh, I tend to play, when I'm playing on my 4K TV with my powerful gaming PC, I tend to play with, um, yeah, total overhaul like the rest of the gang. However, if I'm playing on my Steam Deck, I've been tending towards uh, just good Morrowind. It's a real good experience on the Steam Deck because, hey man, the classic graphics, when you add in normal maps with them, looks better than it has any business looking. Total overhaul for fall children. Some removed, others added. Yep, yep, yep. I also do remove some and add some. Wink. Um, interesting, I broke the website. Kind of, though. Yeah, for, for a while I was trying to kind of understand where Just Good Morrowind fit in, but it really is like the perfect basis if you're trying to make or experiment with your own mod list or something, or if you want to install it on Android as a base, it's just the perfect base for, you know, a modded install, I think. At the Welpa over here, MGSO, you're killing me, guy. <laughs> Kick him out of here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah. Halt, criminal scum. I think that was warranted. There we go. This is why it's broke. See, this is why you run it locally, kids. I broke it. Git.py, AppSha. What are you doing? What are you doing here? Cannot import name. What's trying to do that? Dynamic pages. Okay, let's go back there. I think Atualpa is a expanded vanilla man, perhaps. Which expanded vanilla, keeping the vanilla aesthetic, but using you know Morrowind enhanced textures to give you that crisp, um, high res look, and it's be it's I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. <clears throat> and let's not forget, um. The Starwind mod list, which has been helpfully curated with uh, some more s experienced Starwind players. I myself voice several characters actually in Starwind, and I actually haven't beaten it yet. Don't judge. I will. Someday. He uh, He's understating a little bit. He plays the best characters in Starwind. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't want to spoil it, but there is one that, mm, yeah, there's one I'm particularly fond of my performance of but yeah i won't spoil it <laughs> okay uh, let's see here what did i do okay 2.99 in index what oh okay i see yeah i see. oh okay okay right <laughs> Oh no no no! This is in the hmm. This is in the hmm base, I think. This is a bug hunt. We're on a bug hunt here. All right. Yeah. No no okay. What? Return render. Yeah, it's in the template. Wow, this is. It's not gonna tell me. where in the template it's blowing up at here but i am trying to write the if we look at the beta version of the website for example 
We are, yeah, right up here. We're writing the, um, that gives me a clue about where it is. Site version. Here we go. Momosha. Momosha. And I believe I'm sticking that in by way of a context processor, which is a Django feature. Yeah, here we go. Context processors. Boom. All right, let's open that up, shall we? Context processor allows you to basically process some context, meaning um, in any given page, you have data effectively that you want to put in there. And yeah, look at this. Look at this. All right, so let's just out with the old, in with the new, or really just out with the old. Momo rev is git tag. That's all it is. Or Momo sha rather, git tag, git tag. There we go. Oh, um, interesting. Let's just make them bold. Get tag. I'm gonna come back here. Oh, I see it. It's trying to. Mm, okay. It's trying to link. Excuse me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just erase this feature because I don't think it's that useful. But one of the things it's doing here is. It's making that a link to the actual commit on GitLab, which is neat in theory. <laughs> what you're testing is my patience. Um, but like the actual practical use of this is is limited, I think. So we're just gonna we're gonna junk that. We're not gonna make it a link anymore. And if somebody wants it back, they can let me know and I'll think about it. But I think most people are just not gonna be wanting to know that. Okay, will it blend? Take 10. Uh, also, I don't know if you noticed, but when I refreshed the stat page when it said hello, Firefox offered to tra translate from German. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played. Oops. <laughs> okay, well, let's just demonstrate that again then. Uh, yeah, it wants to, <laughs> uh, thank you, Firefox, but no. All right, so, um, yeah, you know, I mean, in reality, none of this is really needed. I'll keep this here for now. I mean, uh, yeah, I'll keep this here for now. The reality is none of this is none of this is really needed. Let's uh there we go. Yeah. Just for consistency. So the local development environment looks like what Ansible is gonna put out there. Okay. So we got a bundle of things going on here. Let's all let's roll it up and get ready. And we've got uh not that much time left in the stream, so let's uh let's get right to it. All right, so in the deploy tooling side, we've got some changes here that will write out the git info as a string for performance reasons, like we went over, saved. In here, we're adding just a placeholder variable so it doesn't blow up if it's ever invoked without defining it, and the version will be change me, hopefully as a clue to do something, saved. And then in here, um, we probably didn't need to define it as a variable but since i'm using it twice just feels better to put it into a variable and then use it down here changed uh save that but that's not all folks we need to actually put it into the deploy command that we're using in ci so let's uh oh, let's see here mm. Hey, Ferris. Welcome. It's good to see you. Lucy Ferris. <laughs> it's good. It's good to hear from you. Glad you're here. Welcome back, friend. Yeah, we haven't I haven't done the streams in a minute. Um, decided to bring them back because it's good for my soul. And I love y'all. So yeah, we're doing it. Export um Momo Rev equals And then we're gonna do this. 
this number here. Django app E. <laughs> you got it, man. Good to see you here, Ferris. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Let's go to extra bears. Rev. <clears throat> if you noticed me pause as I was writing this, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm like seventy percent sure that this actually does what I think it's gonna do, which is assigns the value of get described dash dash tags to the Momo Rev variable, and then I can use it down here. We're gonna see. We'll see. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So we have, uh, whoa, there's dirty changes in here. What? Oh, yeah, these files here. Nuke them. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, let's go rev string. Let's go ahead and commit that. Push it up. And the deploy code is bundled in a way uh, with the website code as a git submodule, which is a git repo in a git repo. Um, so when there's changes to it, it reflects in this way, right? We have a sub project commit. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Um, this is a work in progress bit right here. I'm not going to save that just yet, but this is what I want to save. So let's go ahead and Boom, stage that. I'll talk about this in a minute. We've got a change to our context processor. Actually, we aren't actually even using Momo Sha anymore, so let's go ahead and context processors. Let's whack that out of there. There we go. Less is more. For those of you Python Black fans out there, I know you love it. If I do this and save it, it formats it like that. If I erase the comma, this is where I wish, like, Python Black aims to take away your decision making and formatting, but, like, it awkwardly lets you have some decisions, you know? Like, I can put the comma in there and get this. I can take the comma out and get that. It's a little awkward. I don't love it. I don't believe Go Format has that feature shall we say but uh yeah it is what it is all right all right good looking good and so let's just for posterity let's do one more quick local test here cool okay and let's do one more quick deploy up to the staging site for a sanity check i wonder if i can get yanni yanni I'm pup sitting for my brother. Hello, Yanni. Come here, buddy. Hi. No, Yanni. he's shy. He's shy. Come here, Yanni. Hello, buddy. Hello, Yanni. He's uh, Yanni is a Greek hound. Oh, here you are, buddy. Come here, buddy. Say hi. <laughs> nope. I was hoping to pick him up and put him on camera. Yanni is love. Yeah, they, uh, it's, yeah, that's a, hmm. like, sometimes it wants two, sometimes it wants one. Yeah, some of the decisions that it makes for you are indeed a little bizarre. Um, I was hoping to get Yanni on camera, but it's not happening. That's okay. And we're back. Cool. So, website's working. All right, let's go ahead and check our endpoint with the plant. Cool, working, awesome, good. I'm going to go ahead and push it up and we can see our magic auto deploy process happen and marvel in, at the glory. Okay, um, so yeah. And I don't know if this is going to be the final form of how we pass the version information along. I just, this endpoint was already here. So I figured, you know, let's make it useful. Um, and we'll see, we'll see if this actually does what I hope it does. Um, yeah.
push that up there. And then so, whoa, Gonzo's been doing stuff. Whoa, okay, I gotta stash this. And we'll get pull dash dash rebase. Get push. Boom, there we go. Let's apply that. And so now let's go ahead and take a look here at Pipeline City. There we go. We got the pipeline kicked off now. Hey, that's me. And we have two jobs. Tests always run when we're not doing a, you know, a deploy of the main site. We want to make sure we don't bork the code in some way. Um, got about 80 tests that open practically every page on the website and make sure there's no errors and other things that make sure our data is good. And then, yeah, after the tests run, then the deploy will run. Um, so... Yeah, we got that going for us. While that's blending, let's go back to our... Uh... So we looked at this. We didn't exactly implement everything, but we looked at this. Um... Hey, may I step in for just a moment? Please do. Uh, my buddy, Chris Janduski, the trench broom lead, is uh, he is in the process of doing a merge request for app images right now, and he is looking for some testers to get app images going. So... I thought that would be really cool to mention because I know you and I have talked about uh, going over there and doing app images like a bunch of times. And uh, yeah, like two or three days ago, we had some people come in and they're like, oh man, I can't use French Broom on store. And he was like, oh, I'm not really <laughs> sure when I'm going to implement that. And then he just kind of did it. So Nice. I wasn't going to do it until 2090, but I kind of wanted to do it. I'm in. Just give me a link. I'm in for sure. Same here. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think we can use the rest of the time of the stream to talk about the Momo Tools Pack, even maybe get it started um, while we're waiting for, you know, the pipelines to blend. Yeah, so here we're checking our data. Yippee. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So in the uh, – yeah, awesome. Thank you for the link there. Appreciate that. Cyanide and fiberglass. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's take a look. Yeah. Oh, it won't run. Any chance we can get a snap? Uh, get out no, of here. I'm, ju I'm just kidding. <laughs> get out of here. You're fired. <laughs> he, he, will, he, he will shoot you if you ask him for snaps. I <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> if you don't know, snap is an Ubuntu Linux specific package, and uh, it's a thing. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say it's totally crap. Okay. Uh, I have a reputation to maintain. I'll say it's totally crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the spirit. Come on, GitLab. There you go. In the spirit of the Momo post-processing pack, which if you weren't familiar, this is the collection of wonderful shaders put together by artisans, artists more talented than myself, math wizards, including the the wonderful Zesserer, but not limited to. Um, we got Vitastek doing work in here. I Kartanov, Andre Kartanov doing work in here. Um, Waria, of course. But we've taken other people's post-processing shaders that allow redistribution that are not parlor modders, and we bundled them together in one zip. Yeah, it seems like Raphael has done some, some good work, um, especially with the, the Wet World shader. Would be very interested in that. Um, but in the spirit of this, right, like the whole reason I put this together is because like, well, I could have people download one, two, three, four shaders, four more steps in the mod list, or these folks have graciously made their work available under a permissive license. Cathedral modders, if you're not familiar with the term, that's, hey, do whatever you want. All my mods are cathedral mods. Do whatever you want. You could even take my mods, erase my name off of them, put your name on it, and take credit for it. Hey, you do you. Good luck supporting it. But that's kind of the spirit, though. Um, and so further to that, I took this work of other people, put it into a zip file, gave them credit, of course. That's extremely important to do. And so what we're talking about here with the Momo Tools Pack is – a similar idea where we've got what? Uh, first off, Umo, right? 
homo configurator, we've got what? Task three command, built a plugin, cause a light fixes. Am I missing anything here? Um, and ground covered by. Is that about everything, I think? But the idea is we get each of these binaries. We put it into a zip. And that way, kind of the awkward manual steps in our so-called automated guide are, you know, actually automated. Let's see here. So, actually, I, I apologize. I Actually, I had a question about this. Hit me. Now, this is I'm not I'm not trying to like say this is a conflict between what we're doing, okay? But I'm just thinking about this from my own perspective of how I was going to solve this problem, right? Um, Yams approaches this by having itself download all of these tools in the CI, and then we embed them directly into the application, right? Now, I know it's probably not nearly as reasonable for you to be doing the exact same thing with the configurator, but is there like a really strong reason you wouldn't want the configurator itself to just have these links and go, yeah, I'll just grab Ubo and Test 3 command and Delta plugin and light fixes, as opposed to having this big like conglomerated zip like you're talking about? Like, are we... Are we doing this because we want to try to have better support for the manual people too, or, or what? Great question. Actually, what you described is very close to what I wanted to do, which was to have a CI job which downloads everything and then zips it all up together. Should the configurator do it? Um, I did think about that. Right now, the configurator doesn't do anything kind of like that, so... I'm not saying that it's strictly scope creep for it, but it is a little bit outside of what it already does. But like you're talking about, so first off, Sector just mentioned yams. And if you're not familiar with that, right now our automatic process revolves around using some command line stuff. And I realize a lot of folks are not very familiar or comfortable with command line stuff. But actually what we have here um, and by we, I mean Sector is basically driving this. Um, should Validator go in there too? Yes, Sophia, I think so. I think so. It's fair. Validator is still useful um, from us as a mod list curator group to check our work, right? Like I actually found a bug in our setup for JGM with the Validator. So yes, absolutely. Uh, OpenMW Validator. Very good. But uh, we have this little project here driven by our friend Sector here. And when he refers to yams, he's talking about this, which is a code name Ash Yams, code name Momo Launcher. I'm not sure what the final name is going to be, but effectively, this is the GUI mod manager you've been waiting for. Forget Mod Organizer 2, which, to be fair, Mod Organizer 2 supports like every game under the sun. Momo Launcher is going to support OpenMW and just OpenMW. We have a much smaller scope, but. We're going to support OpenMW on the big three OSs and everything that you need. UMO, Configurator, Validator, maybe, or some equivalent functionality. And yeah, as Sector said, he's going to bundle all this fun stuff in there. So, uh, Sector, maybe, maybe this makes sense to you or maybe this aligns with kind of what you were doing. But yeah, I was envisioning the tools pack is just a zip that you get that we create in CI that has each of the executables. And then we tell people in the auto guide, use this folder on your computer, extract everything there. Boom. Is that kind of aligning with what you think or? Well, well, well no, right? Because you, what you're saying is we have the zip and then we have the user go get them, right? Yeah. And so that's a badass shirt, by the way. I just realized what that says. Um, but like why why is there the step of the user getting the zip that's the part i'm really trying to understand well so what comes first the chicken or the egg if we make the configurator download all that stuff they got to go get the configurator zip one way or another right um so the way i'm thinking of it is if we make them get a zip 
to begin with, it might as well just have all the things rather than like building a file download feature into the configurator. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, 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 okay. Now I'm with you, right, because i got to have you download something anyway. So it's not like we're downloading a second thing. It's we're just downloading one big thing that's more useful. Um, okay, cool. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that makes sense. I like it. I'm glad you brought that up, though. That's definitely a good, you know, thought to feel out. But, yeah, my thinking is, like, it's a ch it's definitely a chicken in the a and egg situation here. Like, well, if somebody already has the configurator, it doesn't do them any good because they wouldn't have the version that doesn't exist yet that gets all the things. So, yeah, one, one basket full of eggs maybe is better <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Yep. Well, I think that would work out really well for us, right? Because we can share this zip, but then also it will help us to more strictly version the tools that people are using inside of our list. Yes. Um, I think once or twice, it's really rare, but like even now we still have people who will, uh, they'll download the, the release version of Ground Coverify or the master version of Ground Coverify or one of the two versions of Ground Coverify that you can download isn't the right one. And we, we've had people get like slightly out of date Ground Coverifies and screw things up or um, I've seen a couple of guys who had old Delta plugin installed and they run into bugs that I fixed inside of it. Like, oh man, we got to update the Delta plugin. Right. So, so I think, right, this will solve a lot of problems and it will take some confusing decision making out of the user's hands, right? Like, sure, it's easy for me to know about all this crap because, I mean, I live and breathe it. But, like, if you're new to the OpenMW community, it's like some decisions that you don't really know anything about. And if we just take that decision away from you and just be like, get this thing, this one thing, um, I think it'll work out better in the long run. One thing that's uh, dawning on me right now, too, is that, like, by doing this, we could even put checks inside Umo and Momo, uh, Momo Configurator to just, like, look in the tools folder in the, you know, wherever the EXE is for all those things instead of asking the user where they are. Because it'll, it'll know where they are. Right, it'll be right next to it. That's a very good point. So, like, further to what Gonzo said, if we just go back here to the Configurator code, right like the configurator does try um we do try let's see if i can quickly find that code here look path yeah exec look path we do try to see like do you have delta plugin in your path basically impossible on windows but not totally out of the question for somebody using linux you know and if, if you have it in path then just psh, don't prompt for it yeah ooh, ci script huh what are you building Jeez, I'm curious to know. But uh, further to that, we could simply say, hey, is Delta plugin in the same folder as me? Me being the configurator. So, ooh, yeah, that's really great, Gonzo. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, so let's go ahead and just, uh, we only got a couple minutes left in the stream here, but let's just get this thing created, huh? Let's uh, mine, mine, mine. Make their, uh, whoops. Tools pack. Yeah, who are you? Do I know you? <laughs> Can you add support for QT5 CT? It's got yeah. sector. He's using the threes. <clears throat> and, oh, and oh. To the, his, the trench broom test. Gotcha, gotcha. Cyanide fiberless. Is that you, sector? Who is that? Yeah. yeah that oh, okay. oh, okay. I'm like confused over here, man. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Boom. Um, yeah, because right, because Yams. Another Twitch account, actually, that I had made so that you would know who I was when I came in here. Oh, um, I thought I was talking the trench broom guy, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fun times. It's a great username. Yeah, and this would help. This would benefit Yams, too, because you could just, like, pull down the yams would be aligned with what the non yams people are using um i'm not a gooey guy myself so i probably wouldn't use yams as my main vehicle but well and you know to be honest like a big part of the reason that i i was worried about the ci in general is just like i know at some point i'm gonna have to go and get like 10 fucking things at once and so this will actually make the development process for me easier because it's 
it's kind of been on and off this process of like, well, can I bother to start plugging in creatures from this application? Because then if I do bother to go start plugging something in from there, then I have to go download it, and then I have to make sure that the build works, and then I have to get the CI going, and then there's the platform skin. Right. Yeah, it's better to invent the wheel once and then share with everybody else, right? I would ask, and I feel like this is probably a lot of work, but if we're trying to uh, converge our approaches here, is there any possibility that we could enforce a specific naming scheme on the tools? What do you mean? Uh, well, hold, let, let me, I'll type, I guess I should. Didn't work. Um, when you embed stuff into a Calvi application, right? The name of it has to be like Waza Light Fixers and then the target triple that you're building on. So the name of the XE needs to be like Waza Light Fixers, Linux Unknown, GNU X64. Waza Light Fixers, Windows, MSDC, X64. Waza Light Fixers, Darwin, Mac. Uh, I X64, see. That kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm, so I got to tell you, when I give the binary to Wazabear, for example, for light fixes, because I, I produce the Linux executable, I do use such a naming scheme. And in fact, if you download the configurator, it has uh, it has that naming scheme. I'm, yeah, I'm totally for that, though. Like, it, when we download light fixes, you know, we can, like, rename it to whatever. Um, yeah, I'm down to do that. That's a good idea, too, to be more explicit, I think. Yeah, I don't think it should really hurt. Uh, like, I, I think it should be helpful. I, I've noticed you're already really particular about using similar naming schemes. I'll have to double check what exactly the Calvi ones are because I think what we're doing currently is slightly different. But shouldn't be okay. Different. So yeah, you'll note here I build Linux, AMD 64, ARM 64, blah blah blah. Very explicit names. Windows is just Windows. Um, but like I said, if Erm ends up kicking out that ARM Windows build, I'd be happy to make an ARM. Windows binary, of course, and differentiate oh, them with the name. That's a real ho, 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 ho. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he'll have the Windows ARM build for the, all the five Windows ARM users out there in the world that would want to play OpenMW. <laughs> that has been extremely spicy to watch. I, I suspect so. it'll be a lot more in the near future. Potentially, right? Hopefully. Like, like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From, from what we're seeing so far, um, Shockingly, I can't believe this, but uh, Luigit actually has been the problem so far. Right, that's right. But, yeah, yeah, you, you've you've seen a lot of this, right? Uh, I haven't gotten into the actual code myself, but it seems like the problem is that when he built all of this super nice, crazy good handcrafted assembly in Luigit. He sort of did it under the assumption that Windows would always be x86. And so there's just some cursed things going on inside of there that don't really work on ARM Windows. And we'll have to work that out with the actual uh, Luigit developers. But for the most part, that seems to be the biggest obstacle right now is just Luigit. That's a big, big one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, not an unsolvable problem, but it's a thing that has to be solved. Kind of need that. <laughs> right oh, folks. Well, we are basically at the end of stream time. Uh, I thank you kindly for joining us and also for my cohorts for joining me on voice. Thank you so much. Um, we didn't really get to some of this other stuff here. Uh, perhaps next week on the stream, though. Uh, these are things we definitely want to do. I'm hoping before next week we get all the all the bows tied, the T's do uh, crossed, and the I's dotted, and we can have the UMO update out and official finally. Um, but, you know, no promises. We're waiting, kind of waiting on a third party. We're waiting basically for Nexus to give us uh, their blessing as like an official tool. When you go in your Nexus account, you can see like all the mod tools and stuff. We're working to get Umo listed there. Um, and I like we're this close. So once that happens, you know, we're going to cut the ribbon and boom, it's out. So um, maybe next week we'll be celebrating that. I don't know. I hope. If that's the case, I'm going to try to get some of this stuff. This, at least, I might try to get implemented beforehand. Yeah, super hype, right? Woo! 2090 today. 
Oh, yeah. So I thank you for joining me. Have a lovely day, and I'll catch you on the next stream. Happy modding. Bye, y'all. Catch you later, folks. <laughs>